Section 5A, the required attachments for the completed proposal. I am going to review all of the documents that you are required to submit for your application. All of these documents are listed on the proposal checklist. This checklist is available as part of the SCDD RFP and as a handout for this module. There are 12 documents listed on the proposal checklist. One, the cover letter. Two, the project data sheet. Three, the project narrative. Four, the budget detail worksheet. Five, the continuation of project. Six, the organization chart. Seven, the CV resumes or position descriptions, eight, previous grants or awards, nine, three letters of support, 10, the proposal checklist, 11, the memorandum of understanding or letter of commitment, 12, documentation of governing board approval. We will now review each of the forms on the checklist beginning with the cover letter. The first page of your application will have a signed cover letter that has the following information. A one paragraph description of the project, an assurance that you can financially support the project until invoices and reimbursements are processed, and a statement of agreement to the SCDD terms and conditions and that you will carry out your project as described in your proposal. This cover letter must be signed by an authorizing official from your organization. The second form is the project data sheet. It is a form that is included with the RFP or on the SCDD website. The form asks for your information, project information, and contact information. This sheet must be signed by the person in your organization who has the legal authority to enter into a contract. Third is the project narrative form. This form is discussed in detail in Module 2. This is a five-part form where you provide the abstract, qualifications of the organization, collaboration, methodology, and the outcomes and evaluation of the project. Fourth is the budget detail worksheet. This is an accessible Excel spreadsheet where you list and calculate all of the project costs. Details for its completion are in Module 4. Fifth is the continuation of the project. Per guidance provided by SCDD, this is an optional section of the proposal for organizations that know that they intend to continue the project after the grant period is over. You should include the source of funds for the continuation of the project. This can be in the form of a separate letter or described in the outcomes and evaluation section in your project narrative. Sixth is the organizational chart for the project only. It should only include the people who are directly working on the project, not for your entire organization. You should be able to look at it and for it to be self-explanatory. It is helpful to organize by reporting lines and function. When an organizational chart works well, the reader can see at a glance the number of senior level staff on a project and the number of people reporting to each senior person. Remember, you need to include the name and position titles of all staff. These are the same people who should have been listed in your budget detail worksheet. Both PowerPoint and Word are useful software tools for creating organizational charts. 
Seventh are the CVs, resumes, and duty statements. For all of the staff you have listed in your budget detail sheet, you will need to include a curriculum vita or CV or resume, as well as a description of their duties. Also include a description of any relevant licenses or credentials held. For staff that have not yet been hired, provide a position description. Eighth is a list of all previous grants or awards that you have received over the last two years that benefit people with IDD. You are asked to organize your list by name of project, funding source, contact person, telephone number, and amount of the grant or award. Ninth are your letters of support. A minimum of three letters of support are required from three different entities. They can include any collaborators working on the project. One of the letters must come from someone with recognized expertise related to the project. While letters of support do not win a grant by themselves, they can often make your proposal more competitive. The letters should address familiarity with the proposer and support for the project. Each letter must include the company or individual's name, address, contact person, and phone number. Letters of support should demonstrate broad-based commitment to a project. They should also show that the collaboration is both appropriate and genuine. It is not uncommon to provide a template or sample letter when asking for a letter of support. This way you can make sure that it includes all the required pieces of information. If you have a history of working together, ask that they highlight that work, especially if any of the activities were related to serving individuals with IDD. Support letters are typically written with enthusiasm and strong support for the proposed project. Note, letters of support may not be provided by SCDD council members and staff, state department appointees, or entities who will receive funding from the project. Tenth is the proposal checklist. The proposal checklist contains the list of documents we are reviewing in this module. Together, all of these documents are your completed application. The proposal checklist is a required document in your application package. You are to go through the checklist and check that you have included each of the required documents and forms. This is a great way to double and triple check that your application is complete. The two final documents are not applicable to all who are applying for a grant. The eleventh item on the checklist is the Memorandum of Understanding or Letter of Commitment. This is only for those projects that require a formal agreement with another entity in order to carry out the work of their project. This may pertain to the use of funds, use of facilities, or access to a program, school, or other entity. It may also pertain to the coordination between agencies to achieve the aims of the project. The final item, and twelfth, is the Governing Board of Approval Letter. Some organizations have a governing board that must approve the submission of an application or the acceptance of an award. If that is a requirement of your organization, please provide the proof of such approval with your application package. We have now reviewed all of the required attachments for the application package. This is the last module of our training series, How to Prepare a Grant Proposal to the California State Council on Developmental Disabilities. 
you should feel free to listen again to the entire series or any of the individual modules. We remind you that while this series provides you with guidance, you must refer to the RFP guidelines and instructions to complete your application package. We wish you good luck with your proposal.